supercapacitors. This one from America costs almost three times as much as these two cheap ones from China, and it even has a lower capacity. Is it actually better than these two or not? Let's find out. So I have three different type of supercapacitors here. First one is a 400 farad, 0.41 watt hour rated supercapacitor, 2.7 volts from Eaton, and it's for Power Store Yellow Top version. Second one and third one are both 500 farads, 2.7 volts, uh, Samwa EDLC green caps. One being with snapping connectors, and the other one with screw terminals. Now for the testing of these units, I basically went on the internet and found out how you would test supercapacitors, the ESR, the capacity, all that other stuff. A lot of the testing was done with these two constant current power supplies that I got from eBay. And I'll detail this unit in a future video. But for right now, this is what I did for a majority of the testing. So I have a little cheat sheet of information between these three supercapacitors right here. Um, the Eton, the ESR was 10 milliohms roughly. The 4 pin 500 was 9 milliohms, so it's actually the same or slightly better. Um, the Samwa 500 was 15 milliohms, so it's got a little more resistance to it. Now, here's the big thing leakage current. Um, let's see here. The Eton 400 had a leakage current from what I measured about 15 milliamps. The 5 pin only had a 6 milliamp leakage current. This one, on the other hand, had a leakage current of 45 milliamps. Wow. And the other thing I tested on these was the self drain for 72 hour period 24, 48, and 72. Now, on the Eton, remember all these are charged initially to 2.7 volts. After 24 hours, it was at 2.36 volts. At 48 hours, it was at 2.30 volts. So it only lost six one hundredths of a volt. 72 hours, three days, was at 2.26 volts. So it lost a total of 10 millivolts. That's it. The Samwa 4 pin started out actually at 2.44 volts at 24 hour sitting. Slightly better than the Eton. Again, 48 hours, 2.38 and 72 hours, 2.33. About 1% better than the Eton, about the same. Now this one, oh God. 24 hours, already down to 1.51 volts. 48 hours, 1.24 volts. 72 hours, 1.07 volts. This thing only had a volt after three days. Whereas the other two had 2.26 and 2.33 volts respectively. Now here's an interesting thing I did with the um, constant current loads. I put a 20 milliamp constant current discharge load from 2.7 volts to 1 volt on each one of these units. And we're going to go by watt hours. So this one, they say it's rated for 0.41 watt hours. They actually print it on the side. I got from 2.7 to 1 volt, because that's as low as these units will run. Three, oh, sorry. 0.3713 watt hours. So if you drain that extra one volt down, you'll probably actually get a little bit higher than 0.41, maybe 0.43, but I had no way to test it. As for this one, I only got 3.17, sorry, 0.3179 watt hours out of it. So even though they're rated for 500, which there's a caveat, which I'll get to in a second, this one only had 3.31 watt hours, whereas this had 0.37. The watt hours on this, yeah, you can guess where it went. This only had 0 0.2, 0 .200, 0 0.2004. God, that's so hard. Yeah, this capacitor sucks. So from after testing them, here's a little caveat that I just mentioned a couple seconds ago. Again. These are Samwa Green Cap EDLCs, 2.7, 500 farads. Here's the kicker. 
Guess what? I've gone to Samwa's website. I've gone through all their PDFs and all their data sheets. They don't make a 500 farad supercapacitor. They make a 300, they make a 360, they make a 400 in these sizes. After that, you go to 700, 1200, but they're much bigger size um, cylinders. So it doesn't even apply to them. They don't make a 500. I've done a little more research on the internet. Guess what? These are rejects from Samwa that were probably thrown in the dumpster and they were just rebadged. They put a new case, a uh, new piece of plastic on it, reprinted, make it look authentic, and market them as 500 farads. I believe I did do a, te a different test to try to figure out the farads. Um, this one tested out at about 410. And this one I believe tested out, I'm trying to remember from memory because for some reason I didn't write it down. Um, this one tested out at like 280 or so. So it's probably, these are more than likely originally 300, um, 300 farad super caps that just barely fell out of their spec. It just wasn't right, so they threw them out type of deal. And someone else grabbed them in mass. This one tested out like 150 farads. That's it. So, and it has terrible leakage current, so it loses the power really quick. So now after seeing that their four pin version is actually pretty good. It's close to um, what this one can do, except that chances are this is probably a 300 farad capacitor in reality, not the uh, so claimed 500. I bought these in a batch of 10. So I tested the other nine. I'm gonna bring the camera over in a second just so you can take a look at it. It's a lot easier than me just routing off numbers constantly for the like, next three minutes and putting you to sleep. But Here's the one other thing, when you get cheap super caps, I found this very interesting. I think it's this one. All of these super capacitors that have four pins, I'm gonna bring them on up here close. And actually would help if I match up one that's good. And let's put it that way. And let's refocus here, nice and close. Oh, wrong way. There we go. Okay, now, See if I can hold these correctly here and look at them. Now normally positive, as you can see marked on top of here, is by your other two mechanical pins. These pins don't do anything except when you mount it on the PC board, it gives it extra rigidity and stability. Now positive is on here, negative is the uh, waffle print. I got one that is actually, I thought they just reversed the pins when they put it on there. No, the actual internals of the supercapacitor is actually reversed. They have negative up here and positive down here. I even tried charging it originally. <laughs> Let's see here. I even tried originally charging this supercapacitor in the normal fashion with positive being on top here with by the other two mechanical pins. And I did it slow, I had like 50 milliamp charge. I got it up to maybe 0.2 volts, let it turned it off and just watched the meter. It immediately drained down and then went in the negative. So I had to re reverse it. It actually is physically reversed inside the can too. So we definitely know why this one was rejected, but they still sold it anyway. So it's going to be junk for me. It's not going to work on my circuit boards because I have it set up the correct way. Okay, so now I'm going to bring you down to the page which has all my information for the remaining nine four pin super caps. So let's bring you around and I'll show you what I got on those as well. Okay, so I got nine super caps, and if I can get in here close enough, we'll start up here. Now these are the 24, 48, and 72 hour voltages for the uh, self-discharge test. And I printed on here 2.7 volt to 1 volt discharge, how many watt hours we have. And I'm just going to pan over here real quick so you can see exactly what's going on here. Oops, that was, this is the one that has the reverse terminals. And it's definitely got some internal problems because you can see after 24 hours, it's already draining down a little bit more than the rest. Okay, so first off, basically the moral of the story is you got to be careful when you buy supercapacitors from China. You could get a pretty good deal 
you got to know what you're buying and you can also get screwed. Case in point, these screw top ones, I have a few more sitting around here and they all tested roughly the same. They're junk. They suck. So I will never get screw tops ever again from China because they really, they're terrible. Now, as for the American one, these cost $12, whereas this one and the screw top cost about $4.50 each. Um, depending upon if you buy them in bulk or if you buy them in single quantities, either from eBay or AliExpress. <clears throat> For the Eton, it is a... or Eaton. Am I pronouncing it wrong? I think it's Eaton. Now, for the Eaton, it's rated for 400 farads. I think I tested it out at 410 roughly or so. It may actually be 400. I don't exactly have $50,000 worth of equipment to actually test these to precision. So, it's a good ballpark. And same with this, my guess is probably these are three, these are rebadged 300 farad supercapacitors. So you only pay 450 each for these, but you have to keep in mind they're not 500 farads. They're more like 300, maybe 260 if you get a bad batch type of deal. But these four pin ones are actually fairly well. I haven't had too many problems with these because I've ordered these before, but they never last very long. They don't discharge a lot, but they don't have that much capacity, and that's why. Apparently, these are closer to 300 farads. So if you want the best, go ahead and buy American, or probably even if you get actual supercapacitors from the manufacturer over in China that did pass their quality check, they'll be badged correctly, and you'll know what you're getting. And you'll pay a premium to get a good supercapacitor. Now, if you want to stay on the cheap, then yes, Get the four pins, um, even the two pins are actually pretty good too, but I prefer the four pins because they're stronger, and these seem to test out slightly better than the two pin variants. For some reason, I guess there's a better quality control on them. You can get these, I would test them, I'd buy them in bulk. Like, if you only need four or five of them, buy a pack of ten, test them all, and then grab the best of that bunch and put the other ones to the side for whatever little project you want to do. And you'll probably be satisfied with what you get. Just keep in mind, these are not 500 farad super caps.